We just spent a very romantic and wonderful weekend in Bodrum, Turkey. Never heard about it? We hadn't either, but we went and had a great weekend and we're going to tell you all about it in this video. Yeah. Did you like it? I did. I liked it a lot. And if you don't know where Bodrum is, I will show you a little map here. It's on the <laughs> southwest coast of Turkey. Beautiful ocean, bay, mountains. Great people, great food, we just had a great time. And we learned recently that uh, prior to COVID, there was only about 50,000 people that lived there. And now there's about 150,000 people that live there. Why has it been discovered? Why are people going there? We're gonna tell you about it. So we actually had done a, a bike and sail on a, a boat, which we will tell you about in a couple weeks, where we got on a boat in Bodrum, we sailed around the bay, we came back to Bodrum. And we had a couple of days when we got off the boat to just relax. Yeah, yeah. And we normally don't just relax anywhere and uh, found that Bodrum was the perfect place to do that. Yeah, and you know, this is a place where a lot of people, there's a lot of boating activity and we'll show you again pictures of all of the, the different ships that were, were uh, docked there. There and must have been at least a hundred ships that you could, you know, you could buy tours on and go see the Blue Bay and go see the Green Bay and go see the Purple Bay and go see, you right. know, all these things. It was just a big tourist destination and a lot of, a lot of folks coming down were actually coming from the UK. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely there were a lot of tourists and we were there right at the end of the season. So imagine uh, during season, which is in the summer months, there's a lot more activity. There wasn't really that much activity, but there were still quite a few people there. And this video is not about taking a boat excursion or taking a ferry or going into, you know, other places around the bay. We did that prior to coming to Bodrum. This, this video is about the weekend that we spent in Bodrum. Yeah, and so um, we we know that our location videos usually don't do very well because we just don't, can't compete against National Geographic and so on. What we thought we would do this time is really appeal to our audience of people who actually watch our videos. I mean, we are Eat, Walk, Learn. Here's, here's Steve and I'm Chris. The walking part is a big part of what we do. So what we are going to do on this video is give a walking tour. We know all of you guys like those free walking tours in every city. Well, Bodrum didn't have a free walking tour, so we created one ourselves. So we put together a wonderful free walking tour. We're gonna walk through that in this video. We also wrote a, a blog post about it, which is in the description for a free walking tour for Bodrum, and you can print it off. There's an interactive map in there, and it tells you everything we're gonna do right now in this video. In addition, that free walking tour will also be in GPS My City as soon as they get that up, so give that a little while. Uh, G what is GPS My City? Well, GPS My City is a great way to do self-walking tours, and it's got a fantastic it's navigation. An it's an app yep. on your phone. Amazing navigation takes you down any little alleys that you need to to get to the to really cool things in any particular city, and it's really easy to use. And uh, yeah, it's just and, a great and app. It's actually free, but you can pay for the premium, which we do because the the navigation on it is much better than Google, and it does take you. We I don't know where we were, but someplace we were doing, a, I think it was in Vigo, Spain, and it actually took us down this back alley up an elevator and uh, up to a castle and saved us about three miles of walking because it, it actually right. walks you there rather than Google kind of walks you on a driving path. So right. anyway, all right, so starting off with this fantastic Bodrum is you've already seen the pictures of how pretty it is. The first place you're gonna start on this, this walking tour, this free walking tour, is at a flamboyant, over the top, fancy pants museum um, that the Turkey used to have. They had a famous singer called Zeki Moren, who think of him as Turkey's Liberace or Turkey's Elton John. He was very famous. He died in the 90s, but very flamboyant, had fancy costumes and all, you know, all kinds of things yeah. that he yep. crooned all of his songs to all the Turkish people. Singer, actor, just a widely popular uh, figure here in Turkey. And we got to go to his home and, you know, tour, tour the home and see all of, all of his costumes, costumes yeah. and, and where he lived. And it was, and his was, art collection and his car. We got to see his car. He had an old, what, a 70, a 76 Buick Regal. <laughs> and they actually had pictures of how they got it from the U S to, 
to Turkey, and uh, it was pretty cool. And it, it was pretty well preserved uh, Regal. I think my grandmother had that car back in the day. <laughs> anyway, uh, definitely go there first. It cost I don't know three or four dollars. Totally worth it. Spend the money. It's worth it. It's a very, very local, cultural thing about Turkey. He grew up there. He died there. He's from there. And uh, it's just a fun thing to do. So once you, he, so the house is down on the water. Once you go to the house, then you'll walk around through the marina and so on and make it to the Bodrum Castle. Now the castle, wow, what a castle. I mean, we've been to a lot of castles around uh, Europe and around the world. And this one's well-maintained. What is most, it's, it was built in um, the 14th century, and then it's had multiple iterations of as Turkey has changed over time. And um, what is most interesting about it is inside there's over 280, I think it is, um, shields of different logos and different family shields and so on. There's even one from uh, King, the King of England. King, was it King Edward? The King Edward? Sorry, all you Brits. One of your <laughs> kings, there's a one. shield in there of his. And then what's also fascinating is there's a bunch of towers in the, in the uh, castle, and each tower represents a different country. So there's like a Europe tower, a, a French tower, and an English tower, and so on. And those are kind of different, too. Now, um, it does cost some money to go in the castle. I think it was 23 bucks if you're not Turkish and like 50 cents yeah. if you are. So yeah, yeah. That's kind of bummer. Yeah, the price was, was a little daunting. Um, I really appreciate the architecture. I just, you know, enjoy seeing how these amazing structures were built and where they got the stone from and how they actually erected them, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Uh, this one was, was really interesting because it was right on the water. A lot of times you have to walk way up yeah. to the top of the hill to, to get to the castle. Uh, this one was right at the marina, really accessible, really easy to get yeah. to. And uh, and also you know, in it was the uh, underwater archaeology museum. So they've, they've, they've put together all the treasures they found from all the shipwrecks around and yeah. put that in there too. So definitely yeah. want to go and check that out. Now, um, the, from there, we actually walked to the bazaar. Now, if you've been to a Turkey, Turkish bazaar, you probably think it's going to be like socks and tennis shoes and spices and whatever. This bazaar actually was like a real flea market bazaar. I mean, everybody brought in their personal stuff. And of course, they were I mean, they're professional it, it, vendors. But It may change day yeah. by day, d the day that we were there. That's, you yeah. know, at the time And then I there. think Tuesday, it's produce and Friday, it's clothing or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But every day, there's there's a, a, a flea market bazaar going on rather than yeah. Just, you know, buy a bunch of pairs. Definitely of worth so, checking out. Yeah. And if you're doing any any transport, that's also right by the bus station. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's really easy to get to, really central in, uh, in and, the city. And then on your way, you have to get a picture of yourself in front of the Bodrum sign. By the way, here's a tip for you. If you're looking for a bathroom, the WCs are just to the left of the Bodrum sign. They're, I think they were free <laughs> or maybe 10 cents or something. So, Which is something about Turkey is mm -hmm. that you generally have to pay to use the public restrooms. Yeah. So, just be and it's not, it's 10, 10, 15 cents. So, okay. Then from the bazaar, uh, we walked along um, all through the, all the, the old whitewash buildings along the road um, to the fascinating um, uh, ancient world, ancient, ancient, what's that, what are they called? Ancient wonder of the world. The ancient wonder, the one, number, of, one the of the seven, seven ancient, ancient wonders of the world. Wonders of the world. And I'm going to butcher the name of this. It was the mausoleum of... Helicarnassus. Helicarnassus. Sorry that I'm not pronouncing it. I'll type it down below. Helicarnassus. So um, we had just actually been to one of the ancient wonders of the world over in um, Ishmer. We went to uh, Ephesus and went to the Temple of Artemis, which was another one. I think that's number five, and this one's number six. Anyway, um, it was a, 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 you'll see pictures here. It's a, there's not a lot there. When you go in, you can actually go and see a model of what it is that you're looking at. And it was a mausoleum of the previous governor. Built for somebody named Mosulus. And I was like, the mausoleum built for Mosulus. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. where the name came from. And, uh, and in the time when it was built, it was an amazing structure in something like 426 uh, B BC. BC, yeah. Uh, Ten stories tall, uh, you know, fantastic uh, feet at, uh, of its time, uh, but now there's I mean, a lot of cool ruins and and very interesting. And you can see some of the of yeah the 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 infrastructure of how the water drained from the 
ruins are from the mausoleum and so on. And then and there's a lot of um, blueprints and stuff of sketch- sketchings of how the mausoleum looked. What was nice is to put together that history with the Artemis history that we just learned in Ephesus. So, you know, the pieces of the puzzle kind of work to yourself together as you go along the Turkish coast. Right. Um, I just want to take a second here and tell you that in the description is a link to an interactive map. So if you want to go uh, send that interactive map to your phone, you can follow this route on your phone through Google. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please give us a subscribe. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, if you like this video or you want to see some other videos, please hit that subscribe button and also uh, hit the notifications so that you can learn when we have new videos that come out about once a week. Yeah. So we're halfway through the video. We have a couple more really great places to tell you about. Um, this is kind of a new format for us of you know giving you a walking tour of where to go. So give us some comments. Do you like this? Are we too wordy? Are we too mouthy? Or is this exactly like, is it is the conversation, is that what you like? Or uh, do you just want to see a bunch of pretty pictures and uh, send you a map? So give us some comments because we really are trying to improve our channel so that you will watch more and watch more videos of ours. So thank you for that. Okay, so next up on the walking tour, you're still going to continue along. You're, say, you're still on the same street pretty much, and you're going to come to the Mendoz Gate. Now, the Mendoz Gate was the gate that was the wall of the walled city of the town of the word I couldn't pronounce, Halicarnassus, which is now Bodrum. So the gate still remains. They didn't know how tall it was. Uh, they, it was tall, though, and you walk through it, and what was fascinating is around, there was a moat around the city, and you can see actually where some of the Alexander of the Great um, soldiers died when they were trying to storm the city. And, um, and then the wall remains, and it's yeah, quite yeah. impressive. It's pretty significant. Uh, so, you know, after you, you know, ooh and ah about the gate and, you know, to take your pictures there, it's, it's, it's really an interesting sight. And then you could follow the wall, and the wall is really impressive. So the entire city was uh, was encased and surrounded in a, in a wall, and a good portion of it uh, still is still there. Now we have to warn you, though, before you leave the Mendoz Gate and you start walking up to the next destination, make sure you grab a bottle of water or something to drink because it is a long, hot, steep walk up to the windmills. It's enjoyable. We really enjoyed it. You've got fabulous views on the left and right of the uh, Bodrum Bay and the bay next door. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, it's beautiful and worth the walk, but it is definitely, you know, you're going to, it's, it's, it's a workout. Yeah, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I have this picture of you and you're like, <laughs> <"That's hot." laughs> yeah, we're like halfway up and walking along the wall. And I'm like, are we going all the way to the yeah, top? Yeah, there's this one point that you can't quite see over the over the, the view yet. And you're like, oh, my <laughs> God, I just got to keep walking. But then you get to the view of both bays and the windmills up in the distance. And you're like, oh, my God, this is like totally worth it. It's so worth it. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a great hike. It's really not that bad. But like Chris said, it's free hot. water, be prepared, yeah. have good shoes on for this uh, for this walk. Yeah. So anyway, so then you're going to walk. I mean, you'll, you pretty much you see where you're walking to the entire time. So you'll see the windmill. So you walk, up, you walk down the trail, and then you walk up on the road. And you just follow the map that we have um, in the in the description, and you get up to the windmills. Now these windmills, how cool is this? I mean, the the windmills were built in the 18th century, and they were grain windmills. So the you know the the mill, no, the wind. The wind. wind. Spin, what, what's the what's the things called? The 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 spinny part. The, Blades. The blades, thank you. <laughs> the wind would I blow guess. the blades, and the blades would would turn the spin the, the stone, this, and this, it would grind yeah. the grain. And then you see where the grain came out. So yeah. anyway, there was there's five up on the hill, and then there's two elsewhere in the city. Um, they're pretty deteriorated, but there is one that is completely restored, and you can actually go up. I don't know. There's maybe a dozen steps. Would you say? Yeah. They're yeah. very narrow. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a little scary. It's anyway, a little scary. But once you get up yeah. there, you're like, oh, but this the, is I mean, okay. they're sturdy, but it's just yeah. scary. There's not a lot of safety elements around it. Anyway, so you go up and you see all the inner working. They're all in wood, and you get to see this beautiful inner working of the windmill. It's really fascinating. Yeah, they've recreated it as really kind of as, as best uh, that they could, and it, it, you you can actually imagine how this would have been working, you know, if the, the windmill had been. Uh, in operation, and yeah, and you can and you can imagine all of it. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, you know, this is you know high tech for yeah. you know for the eighteenth century. So. And you can imagine all of the you know the carts with donkeys and things coming up to get all of the weight the the wheat that or the grain that's coming down. And anyway, by the way, um, if you forgot to get your water down at the Mendoz Gate, they do have a refreshment stand at the windmills, but it is seasonal. So if you're there in the off season, it's closed. Uh, anyway, um, really. So then, while you're there, of course, you have to look at the 
fabulous view to the left and to the right. It's two different bays, amazing views of the Turkish coastline. And uh, that, it alone, was worth the climb up to the top of the windmills. Yeah, beautiful views. And this is a, a place that we were told you need to go to for sunset. Yeah. So it's very popular uh, location. We were there, you know, in the middle of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a chance to go back uh, at sunset. But if you do get a chance to do that and near sunset, that's the spot. And you can take a taxi up there. So if you're yeah. not up for the walk, you can certainly take a taxi. Now, of course, after we got up to the windmills, we were hungry. <laughs> so we walked down the hill. Now, going down the hill, I would much rather have walked up the hill from the uh, along the wall and down the hill to the marina than to walk up yeah. the hill from the marina because yeah. it is steep. So uh, you walk down and you get to the marina and the marina is beautiful, beautiful boats everywhere and beautiful restaurants and high dollar sort of stuff and great places to people watch. We were, a, at this point, we were a little bit burned out on turkey food, Turkish food. We'd had it on the ship all week long. We'd had it in Ishmer. So we, um, we avoided all of the many, many fabulous looking restaurants and ended up at a really cute place called Frank, which was kind of down the way and up the alley. Just check the map. And uh, I ended up with pesto pasta. <laughs> And eliminate it just it hit the spot so a uh, cute little quiet cafe it was. um it was nice to get yeah. away from the buzz it and was the, nice and is that it was stuff. wasn't it wasn't on the main you mm -hmm. know promenade uh so we really didn't have the the kind of the, the hassle and the people and yeah. uh but uh it also it didn't have you know much of a view but it was a cute it was a cute place they had great food great service and uh it was quiet yeah. So, um, and then we went, we went, we went to our hotel, which we stayed at the El, El Hotel, El Hotel de Vino. Fabulous boutique hotel, nice king size bed, very romantic, had a little Juliet balcony, wonderful pool area. They had tea and treats at 4.30 in the afternoon yeah. and then a breakfast buffet in the morning. Oh, it was great. My favorite was the, the hot tub. They had a really nice uh, jacuzzi yeah. hot tub down mm -hmm. by the pool. Uh, that was really kind of secluded and really nice. But then you could also go up to the restaurant. They had a great restaurant rooftop and also at had, sunset, yeah. had fabulous views from there. Mm -hmm. So a lot of great points about the El Vino Hotel. Yeah. It was uh, really, really nice. And we'll put, a, we'll put a link down below for the El Vino. Um, I want to say that the total walk from Zeki, from the Zeki Marin House, up to the bazaar and over to the gate and up to the windmills and down to the marina is about six or seven K, so three or four miles. A lot of this you can cut out. If you don't want to go um, to the Mendoza Gate, you can go walk up to the windmills. Or if you don't want to go to the windmills, you can just go right to the marina. You can, you can definitely cut down the walk if it's too long for you. It was a great afternoon, afternoon of time. Just we really yeah. enjoyed taking probably three or four hours and just experiencing all these wonderful places. Um, oh, I did want to say at the mausoleum, I think the entry fee was $3, something like that. Yeah. It wasn't very much. I mean, affordable pennies. and it's an easy place to do in it. In, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time. It's mm -hmm. not that big. It's not like it's this huge area of, you know, like extensive ruins. It's very somewhat compact so you can do it in a short amount of time yeah so that was that's our walking tour of bodrum make sure you again grab the links from the description so you can do it on your own or download it from gps my city we really enjoyed it bodrum is a really cute weekend romantic weekend destination i don't think i'd want to stay there for longer than a weekend but uh, really enjoyed it and hope you guys get a chance to go there too see you next week